some scent and you're introducing your fragrances, but long before the fragrances, you're known for your custom-made clothes and also, of course, Lady Di. I want to hear a bit about your history, how you got into it. Sure, into the clothing or into yeah, the... Yeah, into the clothing Into first. the clothing. Well, with, with clothing, I've always been interested in... in from, from the age of three, I was choosing my own outfits. And really? When you look back at photographs... See, I was born in Casablanca, and it was a very French, very fashionable time there. And my parents, my mother and father, were always gloriously dressed. And that kind of filtered through to me. And, yeah, I was very stubborn, and I would, at that age, already start. So it kind of stayed with me. And, you know, even when I was at school, instead of doing my maths, my geography, I'd be in the back of the class sketching, always getting into trouble because I'd be sketching dresses. You know? So it was kind of always with me, yeah. And then, you, when did you move to London? Um, I moved into, uh, to London when I was eight. And oh, um, so I schooled in London. And then I went to the College of Fashion, then I went to St. Martin's School of Art, of course, which mm -hmm. was my sort of platform into the, um, the real world of fashion. Yeah. And did you work on Sevilla or anything like that? No, I was, I was lucky enough that um, while I was still at St. Martin's, um, you know, it was the late 70s, early 80s, I was making myself silk print machine shirts, and, and I went into Browns, and the buyer, Simon Worthington at the time, said, God, what an amazing shirt, who made it? And I said, I made it, she said, do you want to make some for the store? You know, this is Brands, just about the biggest, you know, the most influential store at that time in the world. And I said, sure, so I started manufacturing when I was at college and got lots of press through that and it's kind of been that way, you know. I've kind of never, touch wood, I've never gone out looking for anything. Anything that's happened to me has always come to me. Wow, you're really lucky. Think of all those people, like, dying someone to look at you. Sure, sure. I think, I think we're living in different times too now, you know, sort of in the, um, in the mid-70s. You know, uh, uh, as a single, as a one person, you could s have a start-up into a business and still make it successful. Whereas now, with the very big companies, you know, with the, the, the mega companies and the globalization of fashion, it's really very difficult for a person to actually start up a business on their own, unless they are completely phenomenally talented or have something to offer that nobody has seen before. Um, to jump in at the stage I wouldn't like to be doing. Yeah, no, me neither. Yeah. And how did you meet the royal family? Um, I was I was doing my um, it was one of the first collections I was showing it was, it was actually my new romantics collection. <laughs> In, in, um, in London at the Hyde Park Hazard. And we were a very small group of designers called the London, uh, London Designer Collections. We were the first sort of elite in brackets of designers in London. Um, it was Riff Atos, Beth, Bruce Oakland, Jasper Conrad, and me. And um, I was on the stand uh, working, and then Anna Harvey, the, uh, the then editor of Vogue at the time, came back, and she was a fan anyway. And she said, Jacques, there's somebody I want you to meet. So I kind of turned around. Who was it? It was Princess Diana standing there, sort of, you know, five foot ten, maybe six foot one with her shoes. So I went, oh, wow, well, you know. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, she, could have, she saw how shocked I was. So, you know, she always had this ability to make you completely at ease straight away. And then, you know, within seconds, I was chatting to her, well, George, chatting to you. And um, actually, while we were chatting, she was looking at one particular dress on the, on the rails. And, um, and then two weeks later, we get a call from the palace saying, you know, the princess would like to come and visit her to you. Would that be possible? And we said, yeah, of course, you know, bring it on. And, uh, and there she was. And that was in 1987. How did and you feel when she came in? What kind of preparations did you do for well, that? Well, you know, I'm, I'm never fussed by celebrity or by royalty or anything. So I didn't, I carried on my day completely as it was. Fantastic. She came in, she was exactly the same temperament as myself. So... You know, and she, I think she appreciated that, that, you know, there wasn't any big fuss, there was no, you know, security at the door. She never ever demanded that. So, yeah, that was 1987, and of course I worked right through with her till two weeks before her um, sad death, yeah. And you worked on the film? I worked Naomi on the Watts. film with Naomi, yeah, which was, um, it was a little bit of a challenge. When they asked me to do it, I just thought, well, you know, do I really want to revisit? Do I really want, you know, it was 16 years ago now, I've moved on, I'm doing lots of other people and my business is, you know, is much 
way ahead to what it is. And then I just thought and thought, and I thought, you know what, why not? It would be quite nice to revisit the costumes. And, and um, when they told me Naomi was doing it, that was kind of a plus anyway. It's fantastic. Yeah, and, um, yeah, and it was really easy. And it was actually, at first I thought, oh my God, what if I get really upset when I see the dresses again and everything. And it was actually a really joyous occasion to just be able to really, you know, relive those moments again. Wow, it's kind of magic. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was actually, yeah. And authentic. It was, because, you know, the dresses we made for the movie were made from the same fabrics that we made Diana's dresses in. Because whenever I made a dress from Diana, for Diana, I would make a replica for my archive oh. and keep some of the fabric should something happen to that dress. So that's that's how it's happened. That's why that. But we actually only used two of the two of the Diana dresses, the actual dresses. The rest were kind of Diana-esque. You know, what she maybe she would have worn now, or you know, oh. and and so that's what we did with the movie. Yeah. And did you work with other actresses too in films? Um, not in films, so we dressed, we dressed, you know, like two, two weeks ago we did Helen Mirren for the Baptist and Juliette Stevenson for right, the Baptist. Right, she's a big fan of you. Yeah, 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 so we, you know, we work with kind of flavour of the month. Again, you know, I never, and you know, people say, well, why don't you do the Oscar, but uh, it's such a nightmare, and it's too much of a headache, you have to go through the press people, the, the assistants, and, you know, if they want to wear my dress, they'll come to me. You I know. think it's much wiser. Yeah, 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 and they do, you know. And then how did you segue into perfumes? When exactly did that happen? Um, I did my first fragrance about, um, must be about eight, eight, nine years ago. That's something that I did completely on my own. And I designed the bottle, which is the existing bottle. Now I designed the box that I wanted it to be mine. And um, again, I worked with the nose for about three years. And I finally got what I wanted. I finally wanted the fragrance that I wanted. And, it's a long um, journey, isn't it? It is, it is, and you know, it, it proved quite successful. We did it all on our own, you know, with Jonathan, my PR, and we did the, we, you know, it was, it was small, we were in Harvard, and of course we were in Harrods, Fort and Mason, a few stores in the States, Fantastic. and and that was it. And then we were approached by, by Mr. Fideli, and you know, he said, you know, we just love your product, we love the packaging, the bottle, and we'd love to work together and do a range of six fragrances. And um, because I'd seen what Mr. Fideli had done before, um, I just really wasn't, you know, it was a yes from, from the start, and now we're working very well, yeah. And then it's all about colors except for one, right? Yeah, they're, it's, it's, it, well, they're, it's, they're all, they're all color-based. Um, I didn't really want to give them names, because I think if you give a name to a fragrance already before somebody's smelt it, they've already, already preempt what mm -hmm. they're going to smell. Whereas with the color, people have such different ideas of what a color is. It just leaves it open until they actually smell the juice. And I kind of constructed it in the same way that I would construct a fashion collection. I went, you know, I went from white, which would be the day, mm -hmm. to the afternoon, right through to the dark, which would be the, the night time. You know, I wear, I wear the black for, for evening, for black tie, that kind of thing. Yeah. What are the notes in the black? The black is a very, it's oody. Mm -hmm. um, we, I think we use an agro word. It's, I wanted it. Woody and Oody, but I just didn't want to like all the Middle Eastern perfumes to run up now, which are very oily and very heavy. So I wanted a sort of very modern take on the Oods that are on the market at the moment. And I think we managed that. I think we introduced some ice or sandalwood. So there were ingredients which, mm -hmm. which kind of up it as opposed to pull it down. Yeah. And then the white? The white is mainly. Do you know what I can remember? Yeah, I know that's our because we'll forget that. No, no, because, you know, it's, again, these yeah. took me three years to develop, right. and the white was the very first one no, I did, I know. and it kind of, it all gets muddled up and it's yeah. But it's a nice mood to keep, to, and there's the one without a color, which uh, is... Um, there's the, there's, there's white, yellow, pink, green, wenge, and black. Wenge? Yeah, wenge, it's... it's I was trying to think of something that would be sort of from the far east, that would be architectural, that would be woody, and wenge, you know, yeah. it's, it's a Japanese wood that, um, I I'm, love I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, and, um, you know, I have some wenge furniture by Catherine Memmi from Paris, and, you know, that kind of brought the name to me. And have you been making personal appearances with the perfumes? 
Um, we did at, at uh, Fortnum and Mason. Uh, this is really the very start of these fragrances here. So of course I will be doing, you know, wherever we're going to be selling, I will be doing something, of course, just to introduce the fragrance and explain it and, you know, explain the philosophy behind it. And have you ever thought about writing your autobiography? Y yes and no. I mean, I mean, for me, I'm still. I mean, I, I'm not that. Yeah, I'm not young in age. But as far as my career is concerned, I'm still very, very young in my career. You know, there's still so many things to do and develop that I don't really think I've got enough to give yeah, to, to write to write a book. All these things you've lived. I mean, look at people have retrospectives after seven years of designing. Sure. You know? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I see. I, I, I don't get it. You know. I think. Me I think neither. you've got. You've got. Yeah. You know. You've got to. I mean. I do have a history. Yeah. But I think that history is going to go much further before. You know. Before I. I think to myself. Right. This is. You know. I've got this now. I've got to tell it. You know. And yeah. And any future plans you can. Well, we're, 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 we're trying. We're trying to develop the brand. I and mean, the fragrance is the first. Is the first mm -hmm. thing. Um, of course, the fashion has always been there. Mm -hmm. So we're just really open to to offers from different products. We, we, we're looking for product placements in in, in various um, places. So you're gonna do like home fragrances and things like that. As well. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be fragrances. It's it's, it's, it's it can Furniture. be anything. It could be furniture, it could be um, interiors, it could be linens, it could be, yeah, it could linens. be china, it could be crystal, you know, a bottle is a, yeah. is a crystal bottle, so I could do bleaching, but, you know, anything that will fall into my philosophy in my, you know, and as I do with everything, you know, I would have complete creativity control, you know, it would have to, if they're not willing to agree to that, I won't do it. And astrologically, what sign are you? you I'm know? an Aquarian. Aquarian? Yeah. What's the ascendant? Well, you need to know the time of birth. Well, thank you. That was great. Great. Thank really you very much. That was really enjoyable.